back to Princeton Microgreens. Uh, today we're going to be growing broccoli. Uh, broccoli is an awesome, awesome microgreen. Um, they say that uh, it's about 40 times more nutritious than its adult counterpart, um, broccoli. It's one of my best sellers at our farmer's market. Uh, it tastes awesome. And, you know, I really think that broccoli is super easy to grow. Anybody can grow it. Uh, it's, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to start off with broccoli as one of my first videos, uh, just because it, it's extremely easy to grow. Um, again, anybody can do it. So we'll get started with some broccoli here. Let me get some trays out. So again, we're going to be using coco coir, which is my medium of choice. I usually do about two and a half scoops. There should be plenty here. Shake it on around. Shake, shake, shake. You don't need too much. Sometimes I put a little much in here. Easier for me because I'm right handed here. Instead of... Okay. Perfect. Make it as flat as possible. That way when we're sowing the seed in, it doesn't fall in the cracks and so forth. So again, with broccoli, um, I always have my lid here, what to do, um, just so I don't forget because I have so many different kinds of greens. So we top sow, you know, we don't, basically that just means that we're not putting uh, more co coir on top of the seed. We just seed right on top. Uh, and then 20 grams of seed per flat and we weigh it, uh, you know, put weight on top. So. 20 grams, weigh out the scale here, or zero it out, 20 grams, perfect, look at that, every once in a while you get lucky, put into my bottle seed spreader here, I said in my previous videos, this is just a, uh, a spice, a little spice container, just been cleaned out and washed and I use it to spread my seed and look how wonderful it works. Uh, I've seen seed spreaders upwards of $300 online, which is just crazy that anybody would pay that when you can just use something 10 cents from the grocery store. Get out. <laughs> There's always, always a few little stragglers in there. I always want to get them out because then when I'm doing my next tray, I'm not accidentally putting broccoli in kohlrabi or something like that. Um, all right. And then basically, we're just going to mist it. I usually like to give it enough water that when we're in germination, we don't need to give it any more water at all. There should be absolutely plenty of water here for it to get through germination and blackout. No problem at all. So we're going to go ahead and put tray right on top, just like that. Push it down. Get a block. A little pavement block here. Give it some weight. All right, then we're gonna take it, 
And we're just going to put it right up and block out. And of course, we can't forget to label it so we know what we're growing. We'll let that sit for a few days and uh, we'll catch up to you shortly. Welcome back to broccoli day number four. Uh, so we planted on day number one, uh, day number two and three, we left it in germination. Uh, we haven't touched it. We gave it enough water so that it could last throughout the germination um, and blackout phase. And today is day number four. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and lift the weight off the top. Um, and as you can see here, um, this is this is perfect germination. You couldn't get much better than this, uh, especially with broccoli. So uh, now that we have it, beautiful germination, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put it in blackout. So I'm going to grab the blackout tray. Now, if you notice, I'm using a different tray for blackout. Um, these are great trays from Bootstrap Farmer. The only problem is, is that uh, this one is green. Um, and because it's green, it's got a little bit... Uh, like the, basically two things happen. Uh, one, the, sh the light shines through it just a little bit because it's a kind of a lighter color green, so the light will shine through. And two, uh, it's, it's a little short. Uh, so what happens is, is when it's short, it, it can't seem to, to grow up as tall because uh, it kind of pushes down against it. Uh, and it just makes it a little, it, it just doesn't work out really well on the shelf. So. Uh, it'll, it'll push the top, the lid right off. Sometimes they'll fall off and, and so forth. So I use these ones, which is a, a two inch, uh, and that's great for blackout. Plus it's all black, so the light won't be able to shine in. Uh, now, why is that important uh, that, that we have blackout? Well, what happens during blackout is the plant and the microgreens, they are looking for light. And because they're looking for light, they grow upwards to look for that light. So in theory, what we're doing is we're actually tricking the microgreen into thinking that there's no light um, by putting it in the dark. That way it grows up and grows nice and tall. So that's the purpose of blackout with your microgreens. Uh, a lot of microgreens, as soon as you introduce them to light, they stop growing really tall. Uh, so you, you trick them by putting them in the dark um, for a couple days, have them grow tall, and then you introduce them to light afterwards. So we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, blackout lid on here blackout tray and then we'll just go ahead and put it on the shelf like so and we'll leave that there for another day or two and we'll come back shortly and show you what that looks like see you soon um, we have gone and left this in germination uh, for about three days and then we put it in blackout for days uh, four and five and now we're on day six um, so let's go ahead and lift it up out of blackout and as you can see, that is perfect. Um, look, how, look how tall those have grown. Um, that, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. Um, obviously, they're still yellow right now. They haven't been introduced to light. So they'll stay uh, yellow until they are introduced to light. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, but first, we're going to give it a little water. Uh, don't forget that we've gotten to this stage without misting, uh, without lifting up every day, you know, to, to give it water or any of those things. We give it plenty and enough water at the very beginning when we sowed this um, that it got to this stage all by itself without us ever having to touch it. So uh, just food for thought there. Uh, I do see a lot of people that, that like to, to lift up and uh, does it have enough water? Is it drying out? You don't need to do that. Um, it, it takes a little practice, but you'll get used to it and uh, it's going to save you a lot of time, especially when you start growing, um, you know, multiple trays at once, uh, you know, going back and, and watering, you know, 20 to 40 trays every day and checking on them and peeking on them every day is, uh, gets a little bit tedious and it's a waste of time. So, um, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and turn this this way. So on day one um, of putting it into light, um, I introduce it to uh, some nutrient water, um, and that's this right here. What we do is we uh, mix a little bit of this uh, ocean mineral, um, which is just uh, concentrated ocean nutrients uh, directly from the ocean, obviously. Uh, and then what we do is we mix a half an ounce 
of this solution for every one gallon of water. We don't introduce this to the plants um, on a daily basis. I tend to only introduce it, I'd say, um, every other day. I give it a little bit of nutrient water, um, you know, in the morning or night. It doesn't need a lot. Microgreens seem to have all the nutrients they need uh, within their, their seed uh, to grow um, big enough uh, for harvest. You know, we're not growing this to a full, uh, full size plant. So. so we'll go ahead and water this before we introduce it to light. I usually usually take a little bit of a measuring cup. Now, some people have this down to an exact science. I personally don't think watering microgreens is an exact science. Um, basically, what I do is uh, I just take, you know, I'd say the first day, I probably go about a cup. Uh, and then I basically just water it underneath here. Um, again, just try to get this so you can see it here. I just right underneath here, about a cup. Um, like so, and, and you, you'll know by just the weight, uh, you'll start to get a really good feel about how your microgreens feel as far as a weight's concerned. Um, when the coir starts getting a little dried out, when you lift it, it's gonna be very light. Um, but this is a very good weight right now. Um, again, that's gonna take a little bit of practice over time, but that's technically what I like to do when I put them on the rack and light. Every day, I'll actually lift up the tray in the morning, lift up the tray, um, you know, midday sometimes, depending on what I'm doing that day, um, and at night, and I'll just lift up the tray really quick. And I can tell right away whether or not my tray needs water or it does not need water. Um, that's just my system. That's the way of doing it. Everybody's going to be a little bit different, but that's what works for me. So now that we gave it um, about a cup of uh, nutrient water, we're just going to go ahead, introduce it right to light. And these will start turning green within the next, I'd say, 24 hours, honestly. Uh, so we'll cut back tomorrow and see how it's doing. All right, see you tomorrow. Okay, welcome back to day seven of our broccoli microgreen grow. Um, as you can see here, since yesterday, uh, it's, it's really gotten a lot more of that vibrant green. Um, yesterday we put it in, um, in the light. Um, it's still pretty yellow from obviously being in blackout. Um, but just 24 hours, I mean, you can see here um, how vibrant it's already gotten after 24 hours. Um, the cotyledons haven't quite gotten to the point where, um, you know, they're nice and, and, and big and vibrant yet. Um, but we're getting there. Uh, I'd say probably two more days um, before we can harvest this. Um, so for right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to give it a little bit of water. Um, I can kind of lift it up. And I can feel it's, it's pretty light right now. Um, so we definitely need a little bit of water. I'm not going to give it nutrient water since we gave it nutrient water yesterday. So I'm just going to go ahead and lift the tray up like this. Just go ahead and just fill the bottom of that tray up quite a bit. Let's see if I had to guesstimate, probably around a cup of water. Um, I usually don't like to give exact measurements uh, just because m measuring is really not an exact science when it comes to the microgreens. Um, it's kind of all about feel, and that's what I really want to, um, you know, uh, really portray when I'm doing these videos is try to help you get comfortable into, you know, that sort of feel. Um, not everything is exact when it comes to this. It's about look, it's about sense, and, and just getting confidence in building uh, that confidence, you know, having your green thumb and, and, and things along that line. So that's what we're going for here. Um, watered it, feel, this is like a perfect way. I can kind of feel that right now. Um, we'll go ahead and put this back on in the light for another day. Um, and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll, we'll see what it looks like. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, welcome back to day number eight. Uh, this is this is amazing. Uh, I can't believe how easy and fast broccoli grows. Um, I use this as one of my main crops uh, at the farmer's market. So I, I traditionally have about five or six crops that I grow every farmer's market. And then I'll switch out two or three kind of like limited edition crops on the side. And that, that way people know what they're going to always get uh, week to week. But at the same time, they come back for this... Uh, 
you know, just this special. They don't, they never know what I'm going to grow. So it's kind of a surprise, and it gets them to come back and starts a conversation and dialogue and so forth. So, but with this broccoli, we're almost at the point that where we could harvest. We could probably harvest this tomorrow, no problem. Uh, tomorrow will be Wednesday. My farmer's market's on Saturday, so I'll push broccoli out a little bit. Um, now, that would mean that some of your crops might grow faster than the others, such as broccoli might grow a little bit faster than a, a you know, a pak choy or, um, I don't know, a spicy salad mix or so forth, but that's okay. Um, I'm not going to stagger my, I'm not going to start planning on Tuesday and then start planning on Wednesday and start planning on Thursday, depending on the crop. I'm just going to plant them all at once, all at the same time. And then from there, what I'll do is I'll just, you know, I'll leave them on the shelf for a little bit longer. It's, it's not that big of a deal. So we'll come back um, to this tomorrow to see what it looks like. Um, but I probably won't harvest this, harvest, this, uh, harvest this for another two days from now. And uh, we'll get the most out of it for sure. Okay, so we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, welcome back to day number nine of broccoli. Uh, this is at a really good uh, length right here. I really like this length. I, a lot of times I'll harvest at this length. Um, today is Wednesday and our market is on Saturday, so I'm actually going to hold off to harvest until tomorrow. Should, should be fine. Uh, you'll find a lot of, a lot of microgreen growers will do this. Um, the they'll, they'll, they'll crop will be ready, but there's really no point of harvesting, um, you know, two to three days before market if you can get to harvest you know, as close to the market as possible to keep your product as fresh as possible. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm just gonna give it, yeah, I'm gonna give it a little bit of water here. Uh, today's the last day of, of watering, so I'll go ahead and I won't give it too much because we want it to keep somewhat dry and ready for harvest. So maybe three quarters of a cup for the last day here. I'm going to open it up here and just kind of feel in the, in the middle here with my fingers. I can notice that this, this is actually a really good, uh, it's not too dry, I should say. There's not too much moisture. There is a little bit. You'll see that there's a little bit of moisture um, on some of these leaves. You'll see some of them are shiny um, from the water. So what we're going to do today, since we're harvesting tomorrow, is we're going to start the airflow a little bit behind me on the shelves um, to really get this airflow pushing through the crop. So when we harvest tomorrow, it's nice and dry and ready to go in the containers so they last as long as possible. Um, it's very important. I find a lot of people um, all the time saying, hey, my microgreens aren't staying fresh. You know, I, I, I harvested, they're only staying fresh a few days. Uh, I've had comments from my clients uh, that our microgreens stay good for up to four plus weeks. And that's because we make sure they're as dry as possible before we harvest. We do not allow any moisture on our crop. If, if there's any moisture, I, I refuse to harvest them. I'll let them sit under a fan for a small period of time until they're perfectly dry um, to make sure that they last as long as possible. So now that we watered it, we'll go ahead and introduce it back to light. And then we will be back tomorrow to harvest. All right, see you shortly. Okay, it is now day number 10, which is harvest day for our broccoli. So we're going to need a couple things to get this done. Uh, it looks, looks great. Uh, we let it go an extra day just to let it sit, uh, just to get closer to the market. Uh, as you can see, it, it hasn't really, you know, done much broccoli. Once it kind of gets to that full growth stage, it kind of slows way down. Um, and it basically just stops and it'll sit on the shelf for a few days, uh, from what I've noticed at least. So. Uh, we're going to need a few things. Like I said, we're going to need some uh, containers to package it in, obviously. Uh, we, we use uh, greenpaperproducts.com. I'll put the link down below in the description box for all of our containers. We love them so much because they are completely uh, plastic-free. They're compostable, biodegradable, and made of cornstarch. So this will uh, biodegrade or uh, you know, put it in your, your compost uh, and it'll uh I'd say probably around you know a couple months, this will just disappear, which is great. Uh, you don't you don't need to recycle these. You just throw them right away, and they'll just you know disappear over time. I guess you could say. So that's really important to a lot of our clients. We get the question all the time. We're like, can we wash our packages? Can we can we wash the plastic and bring it back to you so you can reuse it? And I tell them that it's made of cornstarch, and uh, they just you know completely uh, compostable, and they just they freak out in a really good way. 
So uh, they, they absolutely love that, and it's definitely worth a little bit of extra money uh, for these containers. So we, we do love them. Uh, we use, I'm not sure of the size, I think this might be a 24 ounce container um, that we use to fill two ounces of microgreens in. Uh, I was always confused about that. Um, I guess that I guess this holds 24 ounces of water by volume. Uh, I think is the way it works. But as far as like a solid's concerned, when we weigh it, that's a completely different um, volume versus weight is different. Um, I might be saying that wrong, but I think you know what I'm getting at. So <laughs> I've never really been good at the whole scientific measurement thing. So. Uh, I also have here some labels that we pre-printed. Uh, we have the harvest that I put on these labels, uh, the, how much uh, they weigh as well we put on these labels. We have a lot of little information that we have on here. We'll get into that in another video. Once that video is done, um, either A, hit subscribe and come back and watch that video, or B, look in the comment box and hopefully we should have that video link up in there uh, at some point in time. And if it is not, that probably means I haven't made it yet. But that's soon because we're still young. So, and then last but not least, we have these awesome food safe packages that suck up the humidity uh, inside our, our container here. That way it keeps the shelf life of our microgreens as high as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. We'll go ahead and zero out the scale. Perfect, make sure you zero out the scale. Actually, I forgot to put this in. Right, so we want to zero it out with the packages and uh, beautiful. Okay, and then we just cut like so. I kind of look. You can see how this lifts right up, which is great. So I can kind of lift this up right here like this and get down. You don't want to get too close to the the coir because you'll actually pick up the coir. Um, I just pick it up. I take a look, make sure there's no coir in it, and if there's not, we just lay it right down. These are two ounce packages, which is equal to about 56 grams. So I look for about 56 grams on the scale here. You just go like so, pick it up, get real close. That way you don't waste anything. And then I lay it back down. I lay some down left, some down to the right. And I just kind of alternate back and forth here. And the reason why I go directly into the package is so when you go directly into a bowl, it, it kind of, it, you just have this giant mess of, of microgreens in the bowl. Um, and then you have to go from bowl to package. When, if you go directly to the package, you know, you can see how beautiful this is looking right here in this container, right? It's, it's very nice, neat, it's aesthetic. And when people see the packaging, it really stands out. So, wow, look at that. That's 56 grams on the dot. So, that's great. I love when that happens. You don't gotta toy with anything. You gotta make sure everything's tucked in. You don't wanna pinch any leaves or any stems because it'll actually look really ugly on the side when it's pinched like that. So now we got the package. Add a nice little label here. Just center it by your eye here. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. My goodness. And this, that goes directly to the market. Okay. On to the next here. Okay. I say broccoli. We should usually be able to get about four containers. You got a little coir in there, so we just wipe it off with a knife, nice and easy. Yeah, we should get about four two ounce containers out of this. It's usually what we go for. Sometimes it's a little short, sometimes about three and a half, but no big deal. I actually have some more broccoli that I grew too. So whatever, if we have some extra for a container here, um, I'm just gonna go right to the next tray until we get to the end here, or at least until I get to the end. I'll do that off video, obviously. 51, 52, 53-ish, somewhere around there. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this, turn it around, not too much more. 
There you go, 56. Beautiful. Just go ahead and tuck it in. Obviously make sure you wash your hands before you do any of this. That's just common sense. Okay. Our label. in here. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. A little bit of coir in there and just picking it out. Try to get as neat as possible. I'm always meticulous when it comes to this stuff. I like my product to be as presentable as possible. I have a lot of pride in presentation. So. Make sure there's no coir in there. Once in a while you get a few straight pieces. 57 grams, we're good. We are absolutely good. Tuck it in. Our label ready. Well, that's it for broccoli today. Um, I actually have a little bit more over my shoulder here that I'm gonna continue to harvest. Um, but hopefully you learned something and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye. Hello everyone, Peter here from Princeton Microgreens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment box. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.